TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are. Live, but by the time you see this, we won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right behind me, man. You see it. You see it. Um, this is a warning. I don't know what's going to go on with this video. Um, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Don't forget, man, we do got twitch.com is where we be at. The lit one right at the bottom of the screen is the username. We got Patreon. We post five days a week. And we also got merch. Everything is located in the description below. Let's get into this, man. This is from Truly. Living without a vagina. Born different. We're all born a little bit different. And I'm just trying to educate myself on what's going on with that title. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 19... My bad. I was born without pretty much all of my vagina. I was just so humiliated and embarrassed by it. I didn't feel like a woman. I remember when you were first diagnosed. That was really hard. What was the diagnosis? But I'm really proud of you. It's part of who I am. It is my story. I don't want to pretend that it's not me. It is me. Born different. My name's Emily, I'm 22, and I was born with Mayor Rokotansky Custer. Mayor Rokotansky Custer Husser Syndrome. The Hauser Syndrome, 22, and I was born with Mayor Rokotansky Custer Hauser Syndrome, or MRKH for short. MRKH. It's one in 5,000 women born with it. It means that I was born without a uterus and a fully formed vagina. Without a uterus and a fully formed vagina. Can't she have surgery though? Like you can never like put a uterus in, right? You know what I'm saying? But you could like, the rest of it is just, you know. I've got both ovaries that hopefully are healthy, but I won't be able to find that out for a few years yet. Okay. Wait, I don't know. I'm ignorant, <laughs> my bad. Let me just 16, listen. I just got told, you know, you have this condition called MRKH. When I found out, it was really tough. I was just so humiliated and embarrassed by it. I didn't want people to judge me. I didn't feel like a woman. When I was 16, I started going through the treatment of dilation. Making a vagina out of that is just so tough. And for me, it was really painful. It's embarrassing. I ended up having what's called the Vecchietti procedure. And what they do is they kind of put a device on your abdomen and use traction to, you know, pull up and create a canal. Ex what? Wait, they put a machine on your stomach to use traction to pull up and make a, a con that gotta be painful. There's no cuts, no nothing. Like, I cannot speak on her behalf, but that, like, I don't even want to say nothing because I'm going to sound crazy. But if I was in that situation, just cut me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be, I'm not making poking fun. I'm not doing none of that. I'm just saying, if I was doing that, if I if this is, if I had HKH, it, whatever it was, just cut me. I don't want to use traction. That's tough. Excruciating and really, really useful. They do is they kind of put a device on your abdomen and... That sounds literally worse than labor pains. It's traction to, you know, pull up and create a canal. Excruciating and really, really horrible, but that was when I was 17. And since then, I've not needed to do any more treatment. You think, well, I must be the only person in the world and you don't find anybody else. Eventually I did. There's a whole community of people. That's really helped. Both of y'all? I know dudes be hollering at y'all too. What, what is that conversation like? Y'all get in that situation and it get hot and heavy and then he like, hey, 
Like, then what? Build my confidence and know that I want to talk about it a bit more. So I remember when you were first diagnosed. Curious. That was really hard. You know, not understanding much about it. You think you're the only person going through it, don't you? But I'm really proud of you now. So I've got to be talking to Charlie today. She's got MRKH too. Just talk to her about what her fertility journey was and then, you know, ask her some advice. I know my options. She said she still got good ovaries, which means she could probably still have kids. Kind of mainly are IVF and surrogacy or adoption. It's good to like find out more about someone okay. that's looked at it and learnt about it a bit more because you can read about it but until you hear from somebody else what they've experienced, I think that's the best way to learn about it and know what's coming really. I'm really glad I can speak to you. I just wanted to know a bit more about your journey and what you went through. I was diagnosed actually 20 years ago this summer. It was kind of strange those first a few years after the diagnosis, not mm -hmm. really knowing. But you, her journey was more crazy because technology wasn't what it was, what it is. How to kind of process it. I'd found more information back in my 20s rather than diving straight in because I was so worried about yeah. it taking a long time, which it does, but I was so worried about that that I think I've kind of lost sight of what I wanted. I think there is a lot to consider, and, but yeah, as you said, I don't want it to take over my life stressing about, am I going to have children? How am I going to have children? But I think it's just learning learning stuff early so I can know what to expect. I think trying to be patient with yourself and not comparing your journey to others in that kind of way and just thinking that this is my path, I'm on my journey, you are not alone. Thanks so much for talking to me today. Like, I really appreciate all the... She has to be very selective of the guys she dates because if she, like, pull up on an a-hole, like an asshole, like, he gonna say something cringe and, and be bogus. So her radar of good guys got to be off the meter. Information. Her choice making ability is Thanks, crazy. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Bye. How did it go? Yeah, it was good actually. As Charlie said, I don't want it to take over my life thinking about having children because I've, I'm in my twenties. I've got to live my twenties. I need to be thinking and living in the moment. I realise how lucky I am that. I Ain't the best time to have kids in your 20s? Like your body's most, like the your body's best age for a woman, ain't it in your 20s? I don't know, I'm asking. I got diagnosed when I am because there's so much more support available now than there was back when she was diagnosed 20 years ago. Just because you can't have kids or people think that women should have kids doesn't mean that it is a be all and end all. <laughs> you can tell how far Emily's come in the fact that she wants to share this potentially with the world and I'm really proud of her for that. It's part of who I am, it is my story. Emily out there turning up? Ooh, is this her sister or a friend? What? I don't want to pretend that it's not me. It is me. Cheers. They made these drinks? Bro, I've never been able to make a cocktail that looks like this. I've always been able to put ice in a cup and then put liquor and then put <laughs> Coca-Cola. You know what I'm saying? Or like get like a one ounce cup and pour like Jack Daniels in it or Hennessy and then just... I ain't never been this creative. That's tough. What is that little cucumber teeny? Hear me out. No, I'm just playing. Okay. All right. No, but hear me. All right. TLO, leave a like, conversation. I mean, like, comment. What? TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Um, she got to be real brave to share this story. It's probably a lot of people going through the same thing. You know, one in 5,000 is rare, but there is people out there. You know, tell your story.